Hi and good afternoon, good evening to everyone who has joined me. Thank you very much. And um, just to make you aware, I'm just doing a quick test. So for the very first section of this recording, I'm going to have a short bit that is uh, live on YouTube, but the full presentation will only be available to those people who had registered and are actually here with me on Eventbrite as the webinar. So really appreciate all the people who have joined so far and um, look forward to trying to break down some of this research that I think is extremely important in terms of understanding where we are in the pandemic and what it actually means. So what I'll be doing is that I will be going through section by section and then for those who are here, I will pause in between the sections and just clarify if there are any questions, anything that isn't quite clear before I move on to the next section. And just to remind you that I am doing this almost as a recording of a course that I'm going to then break up. And so each section will be a an, an module almost on its own. So I very much appreciate those who wanted to be here with me while I record it. And this is essentially where we are going to start. So uh, thank you very much again. Um, I can see I've got people from New Zealand. Um, so thank you very much, Canada. Uh, thank you all very much for, for joining. And um, as I said, this will only be temporarily available um, on the in the context of the of the presentation on YouTube, and then it will only be on the webinar for the people who have registered. So as I said, I'll just break it down into sections, and let's start at the beginning here. Okay, thank you very much for joining me. This is a very important discussion and it's coming out of a number of strange occurrences where one, we are having higher numbers of deaths across the world and two, we seem to be having ongoing circulation of the virus. And as I try to see if I can explain some of those points, this is where I'll be targeting my uh, course overview on this. Essentially, I'm trying to provide a more in-depth understanding of some of the latest research that is coming out regarding increased uh, infection risks in the vaccinated population. I'm also looking at some of the causes of recurring infections like IgG4 antibodies, interferon responses, interferon autoantibodies, and critically, I'm trying to utilize this understanding to be able to look at disease presentations in the short and the medium term. This is based completely on my own observations um, in my research. And I'm happy if people were to challenge that and to say why they think it's wrong. So this is just about an exploration of this science. This is what is driving my focus at the moment. And this is some very important work that was done on Twitter by outside Alan. You can see here that's his, his Twitter link, Twitter handle. And he was looking at excess deaths for non-COVID by age group, age, sex, and month. And it starts up here in 2020, and it goes all the way down, I'll put this full screen, all the way down to 2023, May of 2023. So this stands out because when it's green, it's less than 10% excess mortality, as you can see here in the early part of 2021, after the first waves of the pandemic, certainly the elderly. Um, however, since about May of 2022, this seems to have changed where light red means greater than 5% and dark red means greater than 10% and black means greater than 15% excess deaths for non COVID deaths. So that's the bit that stood out to me and really critical with regards to understanding exactly why would this be occurring. I've zoomed in a little bit on it here. This image is a little bit blurry, 
but you can still see the essence of it that in this age group, zero to 24, and the 24, 25 to 49 age group, we can see in May some of the highest mortality, this is in the UK, in the age groups up to 64, you know, 15, 29.5% in males, zero to 24. So these are very significant findings. And these are things that really need to be explored thoroughly in order for us to be able to fully mm -hmm. understand where we're going and what it is that is likely to be ahead of us. As usual, I'm looking at the threats. Many people will say that's not going to happen. That's fine. But as part of your analysis, you have to look at all aspects and anticipate what could go wrong. So part of the reason why I have this perspective is because of my view on the cause of severe COVID-19. I always remind people that this is the fundamentals of where my research comes from. I've always said that technically severe COVID-19 is a combination between free seromase 2 and the virus, the viral spike protein binding to it, being picked up by the immune system, and then it makes autoantibodies that target ACE2, primarily in the lungs, the heart, and the kidneys. And that's been the focus of the research that I've been doing since March 2020. That is what then leads me into looking at some of these things. Now, it's a bit more complicated in that as the research expands, you realize it's not just ACE2 that's relevant, but also furin, neuropilin 1, DC sign. There are a number of other proteins that bind to this spike protein here and could potentially also cause an autoimmune response. The important point is that the spike protein seems to be the dangerous part of this pandemic. So even though the virus is spreading, it's almost as if this is the bomb. This is the danger bit, the spike protein. And this is what we have to be cautious about. And in the context of what has happened across the world, that's why I am so cautious. Now, I'll make a quick summary here of another important point. Now, a few couple of months ago, I looked at the UK data that was published by our Office of National Statistics, and I made my own analysis. Very important that I am not saying this is what they said. This is me looking at the data myself and trying to make sense of it. And what I was interested in at that time, and there will be a link where you can then go and look at that uh, course if you're interested, is that I looked at a stable time frame here of people's vaccination status. So this is the age groups, 18 to 39 in blue, in red is 40 to 49, then green 50 to 59. And what I looked at was their vaccination status with regards to first dose. And you can see here that this was a stable cohort of people who only had one dose. So I then took this time frame and analyzed it a little bit more. And what I found was that in terms of COVID-19 vaccination status, and again, you'll be able to see it in the course, the second dose didn't actually make much difference. The unvaccinated is purple, green is second dose greater than six months, and red was a first dose greater than 21 days who only had one dose. Important to note that down here in the ever vaccinated or the third booster dose, there seems to be some kind of protection when we look at non-COVID, well, this is COVID deaths, which makes sense. But what is more concerning is the group who are non-COVID deaths. And this is where the unvaccinated and the third booster seem to be coming together with the second dose being significantly higher and the first dose even higher than that. And if you are interested, as I said, you can look um, for the link for this course. And I try and explain the data as to what it is that I was talking about at that particular time. And that's the foundation with regards to why I think it's so important for us to look carefully at the data, look at what it is that we are seeing and try to make sense of it in terms of predicting outcomes and critically identifying who might be at risk because it's as usually a small percentage, but when you put it across a population, 
it can have very, very significant implications. So at this point, I will pause. That's technically the introduction that I was going to go through. I just want to check quickly if that made any sense. Um, you can add any questions or comments there that um, what you think I may have left out. Was it clear? Was it um, comprehensive? I do appreciate if you put in any comments that will just be helpful for me as I continue to um, building it out. Okay, it doesn't seem that anybody had any particular issues. And so at this point here, I'm going to pause as I'm going to be going into the full presentation now. And so the full presentation will be looking at the latest research on increased risk of infection in the vaccinated cohort. If you are here with me on YouTube, again, I encourage you to look out with regards to um, what we're doing. And uh, next time I have this, please join me um, with regards to the, the links for the presentation.